All righty, good stuff. So, um, James, I'm going to try and change an industry perspective today. Um, so it is my view, and this is my opinion, that it's a common misconception that it takes 90 days to fully ramp an outbound BDR or SDR. In fact, if you look at the Bridge Group report, which I've got some data on the screen just now, it suggests that it's 90 days and it's pretty much always been about 90 days. And it goes as far as to say that it's actually a universal truth. I mean, big quote there. Guess what? That data is based on what companies tell them. And guess who tells them that within the companies? The people who are responsible for ramp time being successful. So I'm gonna try and convince you why this is nonsense, why I don't believe this is really the case. PwC did a research uh, uh, piece on this as well. Guess what? They found out it was exactly 90 days as well. LinkedIn surveyed thousands of organizations globally. Guess what they said? Yep, you guessed it, 90 days. Isn't it funny how it's exactly the same for everyone in every organization, apparently? I mean, if you ever question why this statement isn't arranged, why it might be between three months and six months, I mean, the reps leave work on the last day of their third month feeling not quite 100% ramped. Maybe they're 80%. They go to sleep, they wake up, they get to their desk the next morning, they're having a sip on their morning coffee, and there's a moment of realization. They turn around to their colleague and they say, Do you know what? I'm just feeling 100% ramped today. Things are not binary like that. It doesn't work like that. The reality is that, sure, it can take three months to fully ramp an SDR. In fact, you could argue that in the right environment with the right tools, the right mature team around them, the right uh, mature processes and messaging, it may well take much shorter, but it's highly unlikely to do so. And what's more likely is that 90 days or three months has just become the default answer. This is just what everybody says. So we have to say that to, to the research firms and to anybody else that, 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 that talks about it. And that tells me one thing, the very few people are actually measuring it using data and facts. And very few people actually know how long it takes to fully ramp an outbound SDR or BDR within their team. So very quickly, I'm going to try and justify to you why I think the average time to ramp an outbound SDR is more like six to nine months. There are eight reasons. I talk fast, so try and keep up. Number one, ramp time is completely dependent on the maturity of your outbound program and team. There are more st startups modeling based on 90 days now, and there are more startups hiring SDRs than there were before. And they haven't nailed their messaging or their product market fit yet, or even their sales process. So with more SDRs in a startup, uh, in a startup organization with, without those things being in place, how on earth has that not impacted on ramp time over the last 10 years? Point number two, most people base their forecasted average ramp time on their fastest ramp, to, rep ramp time or based on just the successful ones. People don't seem to talk about failure. If a rep leaves after four or five months because they never fully ramp, it's like this data just goes missing somewhere and it doesn't get included. All we're talking about is the ones that are normal, that take the normal 90 days. Remember, and Wendy at Gong said it earlier, there are more sales reps missing target than hitting target. So in theory, those sales reps are never fully ramped. So how on earth can we average 90 days? Point three, more and more SDRs are fresh grads. Another piece from the Bridge Report here, and you can see that in 10 years on, in 2010, very few people were looking and advertising for, for, for SDRs who had less than a year's experience. Now, because of the way that the, the, the market has moved, over half of the roles that we advertise are looking for people with less than a year's experience. People are starting in an SDR role with far less experience than they were five or 10 years ago yet the ramp time hasn't moved. Think about that. Without that same level of commercial knowledge and experience, people cannot learn as quickly. They're going to take longer to learn. Number four, we're teaching reps to use more channels and we're teaching them or trying to teach them to use way more tech. They can't just get on and sell now. Don't you think it's funny that 10 years ago, five years ago, whenever it was, we were selling using the phone primarily. Now we've got video, social selling, voice memos, personal brand, all of these other things to distract us. Do we not think that it might have got a bit harder for reps to work all of that stuff out to 100% capacity? You'll see here that 60% of organizations have five or more tools in their sales tech. That's not a sales tech stack. That's not including the CRM. 80% have four or more. That's a hell of a lot of things for an SDR to learn. Number five, SDR performance is not linear. Our data shows that often reps that take longer to fully ramp go on to produce the best outcomes after the six month mark when it comes to revenue and measuring revenue, not meetings booked. 
often the profile of these reps is somebody who takes time to learn and sort of com confidence comes with learning, I guess, with these people. But when they get there, the quality of opportunity they create is far better. Often reps, reps also slump every three to four months. They go up and down. When most people think about how performance changes over time, they imagine this straight line. We start at our lowest point and we improve consistently. And while that might seem logical, the data tells a very different story. At AIR, we measure the first six months of our outbound SDR programs over a long you know, several years that we've run for lots of clients. And our research team have discovered that the first two weeks of activity on average were the best weeks until we reached, re reached, reached about week 10. So rather than linear progression, performance tended to actually drop before it went back up. And you'll see here, we call that the valley of disappointment where SDRs think, oh, I can't do the job anymore. And where sales leaders are thinking, geez, have we made a mistake? No, it is the natural progression. It's the way that we learn and the way that we go up and down because SDR performance is not linear. Number six, you cannot fully understand your sales process or product in 12 weeks when your job isn't to be in a product. The data suggests that reps are still learning even when they leave. On average, they're leaving between 15 and 18 months. So if they're still learning and improving at that stage, how on earth can we claim that they were ever fully ramped in 90 days? Number seven, the one I keep piping on about at the moment. Now, this is what it looks like to celebrate at home when you're working by yourself. And I jest about it, but the reality is we are making learning time longer when we don't expose people to time with their colleagues. What I'm not advocating is that people need to be in the office all the time, or even that they need to be in the office. What I am advocating is we are missing what we call learning by osmosis. You do not get to hear the founder or the CEO talking to their colleagues or clients naturally sitting at home in your bedroom. You don't get to hear the best performing experienced SDRs in your team and hear how they deal with objections, hear how they talk to prospects on the phone naturally as much if you're not spending time stood side by side by them. So this makes it really hard for people to learn and is extending the learning progress, uh, process. And we will see SDRs take longer to ramp as a result. And number eight, well, I guess the question is what is fully ramped anyway? How does one actually measure it? For me, it's contributing revenue, revenue at a level where you have paid for yourself and provided the company with a, a, a reasonable ROI on your role and on the cost of your seat. Now the average sales cycle in B2B SaaS is about three months. Often it's more like about six from outbound if you're working outbound in isolation. So what are we measuring fully ramped on after 90 days? Are we measuring it on the ability to book meetings that quite frankly, we have no idea will turn into revenue or not? So these are just some of the reasons why I think we're looking at rep ramp time in the wrong way. And of course, I guess the next question is, well, what can I do about it? And there's some reasons on your screen here, some things that you ought to be doing. Number one, have a tolerance for failure. It doesn't always go well all of the time and we need to tolerate that as leaders. Number two, focus on one channel at a time. Get new graduate SDRs in, give them six channels, six pieces of tech to use, they will get confused. Number three, reduce tech. You can layer it in over time. You don't have to race to teaching them everything. Number four, get reps face to face in the office or in a space with their colleagues. Get them learning by osmosis from the people who are already doing what they're trying to learn how to do. Number five, communicate the right expectations. Weight targets appropriately. The amount of times I see people on 50% of target in month one, 75% in month two, and 100% in month three. Think about yourself. Were you at 100% of your job 90 days into your job when you started? I highly doubt it. Number six, don't hire grads and expect them to be ready. Think about, do I need to hire more experienced people or do I need to factor in the fact that they'll take longer to ramp? We have over 50% of people starting in SDR roles with no experience. Of course, they're going to take longer. Number seven, create a culture where continuous improvement and learning is embraced. Call it a coaching culture. And we've had Rich and a number of people talking about that today. Number eight, you don't need to label and define a ramp or no ramp scenario. Stop labeling it as something that's done or completed. It is an ongoing, an ongoing thing and you need to keep looking at it. And number nine, talk to stakeholders internally. Financially model for it to take six months or more to fully ramp, if you are going to call it fully ramped, or just accept that the data needs to inform you of what's happening in your business.